Uh, welcome this afternoon uh, for a session we're calling Integrated Care, The Future Must Be About Partnerships. Uh, my name is Robert McLean. I'm the president of the American College of Physicians, and I was delighted to uh, be invited to chair this session, uh, given what I do in the United States which is uh, primary care and rheumatology. Um, uh, just to give you a background on myself, I'm from uh, Connecticut. I'm uh, the chief, uh, direct, the medical director of clinical quality for a large ambulatory group called the Northeast Medical Group, which is part of the Yale New Haven Health System. So um, in, the, in the United States as elsewhere in the world, I think we see that healthcare delivery is being expanded into various types of uh, units, a lot of them are healthcare systems, at least in our country, and I think here as well. And I think it'll be very interesting to hear how do the different systems try to integrate care across the various units and people who are involved in that care. So in, uh, in the United States, just to give you a quick background, um, as I say, I, I'm, I'm a, the medical director of clinical quality, but I also practice about 60% of my time. And one of the challenges that I find in my situation is that we have met many different size office practice situations, uh, and many of those practices have just clinicians, physicians, nurse practitioners, sometimes um, usually medical assistants, but a lot of other offices have other people. They might have a nutritionist or a dietitian or a care coordinator. And I think different offices have different resources, and we all are, I think, gradually learning that the more people we have helping on the team, the better care delivery we tend to get. And one of the questions is how to do that, how to roll that out, especially in situations where there are not necessarily the same resources. How do we try to enable the various members of our team to, as we say in the States, perform to the highest level of their licensure, licensure and skill set? Uh, and I think we've got a number of experts that we're going to be talking about how to do that. Um, things like the patient-centered medical home, which is a unit that tends to use teams. Uh, look at things like quality, performance improvement. How do we do that within teams? How do we look at the role of the patient? And where does the patient fit within all of this? Um, so I think it would be very exciting to hear what several of our different uh, speakers are going to be talking about. Um, the first person I would like to introduce is uh, Ms. Deborah Ledica. Uh, she, is a passion she is passionate about reducing health disparities, especially for vulnerable people living with disabilities, their careers, and support workers. She's a member of several clinical safety and quality committees for Metro South Health Service in Western Australia, and a member of the Choosing Wisely Implementation Group at Fiona Stanley Hospital. She is the Consumer Representative on the Executive Committee, Clinical Governance Committee, and Education and Trading Committee at Rockingham Peel Health Campus, and the current chair of the Consumer Advisory Council at Rockingham General Hospital. Deborah was a finalist in the 2018 Health Consumers Council Consumer Excellence Awards. Deborah, come on up. Dobra Farla. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, how I just greeted Dr. McLean uh, after his wonderful introduction was, "Hello, how are you? Well, how are you? Are you well, Dr. McLean?" And his response was, "Good, thank you." This is how we all greet each other every day, and I've greeted you in Croatian because I have a an amazing mother-in-law who is Croatian, and I'll share her patient story with you very soon. It's a great honour for me to be here today to share some lived experiences with you to set the scene as to what it feels like to be a consumer or a carer. What challenges we face and what we'd like our relationship with our doctors and other healthcare professionals to look like. I think to determine this, we need to ask the key, what is the key to a good patient experience? Uh oh, oh there we go. No, the back one. Before, um, before we <laughs> technical issues, seniors moment here. Before I'd like, before we get started, I would just like to um, introduce to you. I'm having trouble with this remote. Here we go. Sorry. The um, I first like to introduce your RACP Consumer Advisory Council to you. Um, we are a group of consumers that represent a wide variety of patient views from across Australia and New Zealand. 
The chair of the CAG is Associate Professor Nick Buckmaster, who I'm sure you all know. Um, I'd like to thank the RAC Board for convening the college's CAG. Um, it is indeed a shining light for the recognition of the importance of partnering with consumers in the design and delivery of healthcare and that we can all learn from each other. A big thank you to Professor Nick Buckmaster and Jay Redden for making us feel so welcome and going out of their way to assist, support and encourage us as we step into this role. A little bit about me, as, as you heard, I am from Perth in Western Australia, and this is the first time I've been to Auckland, but it doesn't feel like I've left home. There are many Kiwis in Perth. In fact, there's a large population in the next suburb. They've changed the pronunciation of the suburb name from Warnborough to Warnbro. There is even a New Zealand shop at the local shopping centre, so it feels like Perth is just a far western suburb of New Zealand. So what is the patient experience? I especially like the definition given by Jason Wolfe from the Beryl Institute in the US. He says that patient experience is the sum of all interactions shaped by an organisation's culture that influence patient perception across the continuum of care. The inaugural Health Consumers Council WA Patient Experience Week was held in 2016. The opening address of the first event was by the Director General of WA Health, Dr David Russell Weiss. His speech really resonated with me and he said that people have the right to participate individually and collectively in the planning and implementation of their health care. He further said that everyone in health is responsible for patient care and that the most simple things are often the best. In closing, he said that Patients should feel like they've been heard. We must always remember the holistic approach and pay attention to our values, behaviours and beliefs. Wow, I thought, my goodness, he gets it. He knows how it feels to be a patient. So I'd like to share some patient stories with you now. The good experience. As I said, I have the most amazing mum-in-law. She is a typical Croatian mum who dotes on her family. I've known her for over 39 years. Gosh, that's giving my age away. We would organize, she would organise eight core celebrations and invite 12 people over for dinner. For her to share in good food, good conversations and happiness are life's greatest gifts. When her husband passed away, she moved down to be near us. As we were the only family in Perth that she had. She lived 60 k's away. Over the next few years, as much as we tried to help her settle into her new community, everything we did didn't seem to help we began to think that maybe she had depression, so we went to see her GP, who arranged for an ACAP assessment. The ACAP team said she just needed some more social support, which were put in place, and this worked for a little bit, and then things begin, began to deteriorate. It was almost as if life was unravelling in front of our very eyes, and we couldn't do anything about it. Eventually, one fateful day, Mum ended up in emergency. During this visit, the social worker and the psychiatrist came to have a chat with us. They asked us about her health, what we had noticed, how she used to be, and how we were all coping. They said that she had dementia and this was the cause of her declining health and sadly that it would continue. They recommended that rather than mum come and live with us, as she dearly wanted to do, we as a family needed to think of the future and put in place a care plan as in reality we couldn't give her the care that she needed. The staff were kind, compassionate and so slowly helped us process things. They helped us put in place a plan to ensure that she got the care that she needed and deserved. They told us about an aged care home just down the road that was very good and they set up an appointment for us to visit. This was right, they were right, it was the best outcome. That's what good looks like, partnering with family, with patients and their families. On the other hand, my experience as a carer for my younger brother was the complete opposite. My brother, who is seven years younger than me, sadly suffered a birth injury, which resulted in an intellectual disability. As a big sister, I didn't see myself as a carer, I was just doing what big sisters do. A few years ago, we were told he had a genetic leukodystrophy. It's almost as if you're in a state of shock or denial. Well, can't you just fix it? No one else in the family's ever had this problem. Have you made a mistake? Are you sure? This doesn't make any sense. 
I've never heard of it before, as many people haven't. A leukodystrophy is a group of rare genetic diseases that affects the myelin sheets of our nerves. These conditions are degenerative. Coming to terms with the diagnosis, you can feel intimidated and overwhelmed, and I was told I was overly passionate. You ask too many questions. You can't take notes in this meeting. All sense of trust evaporated. I felt very alone and isolated, and my brother had no capacity to understand. Didn't know where to turn, where can I get some support, and ask questions in a safe place without being accused of being too difficult. It takes time for you to process what you've, to, what you've been told. It's sort of like going through a grief process. So what made the difference? What is the key to what consumers want? As Dr. David Russell Weiss says, the smallest things make the biggest difference. Kindness builds teams, which then increases patient safety. It breaks down barriers and changes mindsets. It's free and doesn't cost anything. and gives joy to both the receiver and the giver. Care has many acronyms. I've got one more to add to the list to capture what consumers want. Care. Consumers want to feel that their health professionals always care about them. I know that you do, but consumers need to feel it. The C in care stands for communication. When we were reviewing the safety and quality data, the biggest number of complaints from patients is communication, or their perceived lack of it. Please take the time to have a chat with me, ask me what matters to me, and what health outcomes I'm after, and then help me design a care plan to achieve that. Collaboration, collaborate, partner with me, my family and others in my life who support me, help us all together to navigate the complex health and social systems to get the best outcomes for me. I want my health team to talk to me and others on my team so we're all on the same page. The C is for commitment, commit to being my partner, teach me about my health and help me understand, give me the space to do that in a safe environment. Help me to understand my disease or my diagnosis, increase my health literacy skills, self-advocacy skills and confidence. Guide me in the right direction to choose wisely. The A is for access. The most challenging but perhaps the most exciting and my favourite. A gives us the opportunity to challenge the rules, think outside the square and be innovative. How can we provide better health access to healthcare? How can I get the right healthcare in the right place at the right time? Consumers are embracing technology. Telehealth and virtual services are starting to become available for consumers living all over the country. This could even interface with aged care or disability care. Having these experts is a valued vital member of my healthcare team. Teleconferences where me and all of my health professionals on my team can have a chat. It's starting to happen, I know, but it's not the norm. Having remote access will help me get the healthcare I need in the right place at the right time. It breaks down the barriers of access for all of us. Let's take a, a moment to imagine what if. What if consumers with complex chronic health conditions are connected to a care navigator or a care coordinator? Whatever health professional would best fit that role. Someone in my local area with local knowledge of services available that got to know me, know about my health and social needs and my home life, had the time to see the whole of me and not my diagnosis. Someone I could easily ring and not be anxious about taking up your professional time to ask questions. Someone I got to know and trust and it's about building relationships. How much easier would that be? Integrated care, currently many invisible barriers and silos exist. It was a complete surprise to me that integrated care didn't already happen. I didn't understand this new language of silos and barriers. I don't understand why there is no, seemingly no interface between health and social care. Navigating both of them is perhaps one of the most difficult things I've had to try to do and I'm not sure I do it very well. What if there's a better way? How do I find a better way? How do I make connections with other consumers in my community? In a collaborative effort between the Health Consumers Council of Western Australia, the South Metro Health Service, 
based at Fiona Stanley Hospital, and Connect Groups WA. The group was recently introduced to the hospital. They have a booth on Hospital Street run by volunteers who help people by connecting them to self-help and support groups in the community, patient support groups that help each other sharing lived experiences. It came about because of an understanding of the importance of helping consumers to alleviate isolation, helplessness, suffering and distress to promote self-help within the community. This is another example. These are photos of the Perth Indigenous Maori and Pacific Island Community Group, which was founded by Tina Turina Walden, who is from the Haraki tribe. Tina comes from Te Aroa, she tells me, the Itzel town of love. Tina is our vice chair of our consumer advisory group at Rockingham. And she started this group to support and engage Indigenous communities into healthy living, sport and education of community members, connecting people for mutual support. And she gets children out on the water having fun and building friendships. R is for respect. Please respect my perceptions, values and beliefs. And I understand it's a two-way street. Respect that my family, carers and support workers add great value to my care. Respect that I am the expert in my own life. E is for experience, the patient experience, the sum of all interactions shaped by an organisation's culture that influence patient perceptions across the continuum of care. And remember, we are all the patient experience. The top three takeouts from here is that kindness, it has the most, most profound effect and it is priceless. Remember the CARE acronym, and these three things will support, will impact health along the life course. Tina Kotu, Tina Kotu, Tina Kotu Katoa. Thank you.